what's up you guys? Okay, so you had to know that this was coming. If you couldn't already tell, this is going to be footage of my solo run on the escalated Phoenix Tackler. Quiet Shy pioneered this shit and Potato got all up in the mix, and to be honest, I kind of felt put to shame. See, in our little Warframe YouTube community, I fancy myself to be the Loki of the bunch, so seeing everyone else pull this off solo lit a fire under my ass to get it done. Now, the footage is pretty much uncut, excluding the sped up and slowed down portions, and at the very end of the video I've got the builds that I used, not that they were anything special. Now, do note, I did die once on this run, which made me extremely bitter, but it was only because I accidentally ran into a stray baton, so I don't really want to count that, but it did happen. Also note, I totally pulled her up. <laughs> I think I'm pretty infamous now, at least on stream, for forgetting to swap my elemental combos. So instead of bringing viral, which would have saved my ass a lot of time, I left on corrosive because I'm a scrub lord. However, despite my idiocy, I soldiered through it, and aside from that death at the very beginning, it was pretty much smooth sailing. So let's start off with a couple tips, then we're gonna have a bit of a talk. Now, like I said, this was my standard irradiating disarm build, and the one interesting thing that I noticed was that the radiation status and my invisibility lasted approximately the same amount of time, so it was quite easy to gauge when either one was going to run out. Also note that it's a good idea, while in stealth, to engage a cluster of enemies in the middle of the map. Just watch for the radiation to drop off of them and refresh, fully knowing that with the range on the build I use, you'll be able to sync the radiation status for almost all of the enemies on the map. Now, engaging can be a bit dangerous as you saw with my first death, but honestly if you equip your weapon with Temple Royale, you'll have enough knockdowns to give yourself some time to disarm or slip back into stealth. For the most part, I spent a majority of my time spamming Bold Reprise because the stealth multiplier plus the animation wind-up multiplier, yes, I'm trying to come up with a new name for it because damage multiplier isn't the most accurate term. Anyway, the combination of the two can deal some insane damage. The knockdown is also great for getting enemies away from hacking panels. You don't necessarily even need to kill them because after the knockdown, the radiation tends to make them fight instead of hack. Now the last thing I'm going to give you is bring a shit ton of energy and health restores. Keep an eye out on both your health and your energy and make sure they stay topped off. Just take note that my build doesn't run any form of flow, so whenever I got below 100 points of energy, I popped one in the general location of wherever I was planning to have a bit of a rumble. Aside from that, those were really my only strategies, and I think this is why so many of us veterans are waxing lyrical about the tackler. As long as you know your mechanics, pay attention to timers, and don't forget to swap into the right elemental combos, then it's all fairly straightforward. Okay, now I'm gonna get a little vicious here. See, the fact is there are so many people out there, which I usually refer to as rhino heads, that think that putting 6 form on a bolt or prime and pumping it full of damage mods makes them uber. Frankly, it's kinda tragic. And this isn't to rag on people who like the bolt or prime, but it's more an illustration of the fact that to some people, damage is the only thing that matters, and that's why so many people are having issues with attack alert. Damage is the only thing they can wrap their heads around. They see level numbers in the hundreds and their initial instinct is, how am I gonna kill it, rather than how can I control it? They spend so much time trying to kill enemies not realizing that an interception mission will just keep spawning more enemies whenever they do manage to get a couple kills. They don't understand armor scaling, they don't understand mission mechanics, warframe synergies, and even worse, they don't understand what they're doing wrong. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I think that there are a couple of factors that are definitely growing this culture. Number one. We don't have easily accessible endgame missions to demonstrate the difference between late game and endgame. Lots of people have said it before, endgame doesn't actually start until after 40 minutes into a T4 survival, or after 40 waves in a T4 defense. You're forced to trudge through late game before you're introduced into issues like enemies with insane amounts of armor, or insta-gib grenades. This tack alert is the first time for many to be dumped straight away into that kind of content. They don't know what to do because they've never sat through extended durations in a ramping T4 mission. They thought that they were doing endgame content when they cleared a T4 exterminate and felt pretty damn good about themselves, not knowing that that was just the tip of the iceberg. Now number two is something that I know all too well, since I may also be a part of the problem. A lot of these players are being spoon-fed their builds without understanding how and why they work. They either skim through a YouTube video not paying attention to any of the tips and advice a content creator may give, just looking for a quick fix, 
or they hit up Warframe Builder and net deck themselves a build with absolutely no context as to how it's best used. Some people are just looking for power, and the internet provides them instant access to builds that veterans put together without the actual background knowledge and skill that a veteran has accumulated. Now, I'm not saying that you need to be a veteran to be good, but you definitely need to take in the knowledge and get a little bit of practice rather than assuming that having the same build will put them on the same playing field. My only issue here is that you can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink. Only players who want to learn will learn, but there are so many arrogant kids out there who think that all they need to do is copy and pasta, because you know, 360 no scope YOLO swag son, blazing! So hopefully we'll get more of these and people will be forced to learn a thing or two, instead of greeting every challenge proposed to them with nothing but sheer force. Okay, I am done ranting and raving, but if you'd like to get on your soapbox, I invite you to pop off in the comments below. Good luck on the tack alerts, and if you're curious about the builds that I used, they're at the very end. Enjoy the rest of the video, and we'll chat again soon. Bye!